Welcome back to the Hood Table to all my hoodies one more again. This is your girl Tanya with the Hood Table bringing you an update on a recent breaking news story here in my hometown of Omaha, Nebraska. A story that I have spoke about several times before in this past week and a story that you've probably seen even wherever you are because this is a national story now, probably a worldwide story now. But again, a little girl, the age of one years old, named Ramiah Worthington, was found dead inside a daycare van that was outside of a daycare here around 50th and Leavenworth. The little girl's name is Ramiah Worthington. A 60-year-old van driver, Ryan Williams, was charged for child abuse by neglect resulting in death. The little girl was found in the van after being there for five hours when it was over 100 degrees. In fact, it was 115 degrees that day. This was this, this past week, you guys, when it was like 115 degrees outside, a van driver by the name of Ryan Williams left the baby in the car. Sorry, the van. And she was there for almost six hours. Everybody was home with their baby. Oh, shut the daycare shut down. Not just My baby prayer. didn't come home. The whole daycare needed to be shut down. My baby did not come home. Her siblings did. She didn't. How did y'all forget her? Y'all picked all of them up, took them off the van. How did y'all forget my baby? Again, just say her name. Say her name again. Ramiah Williams, one-year-old, beautiful little girl, left outside of a daycare in a van, a hot, very hot, scorching van, for almost six hours. This is so sad. The daycare where this happened or child care where this happened is near 50th and Leavenworth Street right here in Omaha, Nebraska. The name of the daycare is Kids of the Future Daycare. Now, as we know so far, the man, Ryan Williams, was arrested, but he was also released out on bond, just released out on bond with $50,000 bail. Now, according to authorities... I'm just reading this from a news station. According to authorities, they found out that inspectors have been to that particular child care at least seven times. They had seven unannounced inspections at the daycare over the past five years. But the Department of DHS says that's, you know, that's very common or that's not, you know, uncommon. But they also found out that the daycare owner couldn't provide current proof of child care liability insurance in May this year. And in last December, the state reported violations of infant and toddler care. A document shows an inspector couldn't find information in writing about specific center staff assigned to all infants. And again, investigators arrested the van driver, 62-year-old Ryan Williams, for child abuse by neglect resulting in deaths. And the authorities said, again, Ramiah was left in the van for about five to six hours. According to court documents, her body temperature was 109 degrees. The daycare has been shut down. I don't know for how long, but some people feel like the daycare should have been shut down a while ago. As a matter of fact, here's a picture of Ryan Williams. And there again is the beautiful little one-year-old girl. Her name is Ramiah Worthington. Say her name. There are people protesting in our city of Omaha, Nebraska, who wants that daycare, that child care to remain closed for good. Will that happen? I am not sure, but I definitely will keep you guys updated on this story. Now, one of our community activists, I won't say his name, but he believes that, again, like, you know, a lot of us, that the daycare probably should have been shut down in the past. Now, as far as accountability... Number one, he says DHSS 
DHHS, um, repeated violations that weren't followed up on. They said it's against the law to not submit fingerprints. There was no liability assurance on the children as of May. That was number two. Number three, those violations alone should have been enough to close or suspend operations at the center. So one of our activists believes DHHS is also liable because of the re repeated violations that weren't followed up on. The owner, Mrs. Wesson, of the daycare has yet to provide a statement. Has yet to provide a statement. And she provides and bills for transportation service. So, was the center understaffed that day? You know, because the reason why the van driver say he forgot Ramaya in the van was because there was another child being disruptive. Now, with the child being disruptive, that should have been a red flag to assist Mr. Williams in securing all of the children. The siblings were present. The other two siblings were present at the child care. They all came together. But other staff members did not realize the baby was accounted for or checked in. We have yet again to see or hear a statement from the owner. And people believe this is not the time to avoid an apology based off of your attorney's advice. But we know how this stuff works out. A lot of people are told to stay away from the media and let their attorneys, you know, represent them. So... That's what's going on right now. But a child is no longer here due to negligence on the behalf of that daycare center. So it would be really nice if that daycare owner could at least come out and say they're sorry. And, you know, face the legal actions if they arise. Now, as far as Mr. Williams, people are going back and forth, back and forth. Yes, it was a mistake, but a very, very big mistake. But right now, he is the fall guy in the case. He was the only one arrested. Even though nobody else in that daycare, again, noticed that third sibling was missing. Not on the premises, but the other two were there. So it wasn't an intentional act on behalf of Mr. Williams. You know, that's probably why his bond was set so low. But in the end, we just feel like more people should be held responsible, including the daycare owner. Because, you guys, I, my child, both of my children have been in daycare before. I think at least three different daycares over the years. Um, and and I, I've never, I've never had to even think or I never would even wonder, is my child in the daycare? Is they in the van? Is they in a daycare car? That type of thing never crossed my mind. But again, every year we hear about this. We hear about children being left in vehicles, not just daycares, but people like parents and caregivers, forgetting grandparents, forgetting their children, you know, in, in a van or in a, in a vehicle. So it, 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 it's, it, it doesn't just happen to daycares, but one death like that, the suffering, five to six hours, when it's 115 degrees outside, that, man, I'm miserable walking from my car to the grocery store, and it has been like 115 for like the last week here in Omaha, and I know it's been hot everywhere else too, but I'm just saying, it has been really hot here in Omaha, and I just cannot imagine as a grown-up being left in a car for five to six. Man, just horrible. Just horrible, you guys. And next, you guys, I'm going to play a video which will help us, all of us, even the ones who think they might not ever have to transfer children or transport children from one place to another. I'm going to show this video. It's called How You Can Work to Prevent Child Hot Car Deaths This Back to School Season. And again, you guys, please make sure you like and share the video and subscribe to the Hood Table if you are new here. 
Please and thank you very much. A one-year-old girl died after being left in a hot daycare vehicle in Omaha, Nebraska early this week. And this is at least the 19th child to die in a hot car nationwide this year. Amber Rollins, director of Kids and Car Safety, is joining us to talk about preventing these kinds of unfathomable tragedies. Amber, thank you once again for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, it is hot this week in many areas, but it doesn't have to be that hot outside for conditions to become deadly in a vehicle. So with back to school time and the autumn season ahead of us, can you talk about how that can lead to tragedy for parents rushing to get kids to school and daycares? Well, you know, you're absolutely right, because a vehicle is a greenhouse. I mean, it's essentially an oven and it heats up very quickly. And we see a increase in the number of hot car tragedies where children are unknowingly left behind anytime we have a big change in routine. That's one of the number one contributing factors. And so as families go back to school and they're shifting their routines, their drop off routines in the morning, um, we want everybody to be extra vigilant and make sure that you're putting into place some safe habits and um, routines so that your child um, is not inadvertently left behind. We have learned from you that uh, sometimes tragedy can strike even with air temperatures in the 70s. Yeah, we have actually documented cases of children dying in hot cars on days where it was in the 60s outside. And the reason for that is that greenhouse effect, uh, you know, about the first 10 minutes is when the majority of the increase in temperature happens as soon as that vehicle is closed up. And when you combine that with the fact that a child's body temperature rises three to five times faster than an adult, you have a, res a recipe, excuse me, for disaster in a very short amount of time. So that's something that we all need to keep in mind through the autumn season. It may be October. Keep this in mind. So what can people do to make sure this never happens to them? Well, we want people to follow our look before you lock safety checklist. So one thing that you can get in the habit of doing is every single time you leave your vehicle, open that back door, check the back seat, make sure nobody is left behind. Uh, we want you to do a few things to get into that habit. So place something in the back seat on the floor right in front of your child's car seat that you cannot start your day without. So for me, that would be my laptop. If I sit down at my computer, and or at my desk and I don't have my computer, I can't do anything. I'm gonna have to go back to the car to get it. Another thing families can do is to create a reminder item like a big stuffed animal. Keep that in the back seat. Anytime you buckle the child into the vehicle, you wanna bring that reminder item up to the front seat as a visual cue that your child is with you. And you know, this may sound crazy to people who think this won't happen to them, but when children were riding in the back seat, these types of tragedies were virtually non-existent. So we know that having that visual reminder that they're with you up in the front seat is very effective at making sure that they're not left behind. Amber Rollins, Director of Kids and Car Safety. Thanks again. Thank you. Now that there, you guys, is some really good advice. And that kind of reminds me of what I said in my last video covering this story. Um, one of our advocates here in the Omaha area um, who was actually, you know, the director of uh, Nebraska Democratic Party and the president of NONA, which is North Omaha Neighborhood Alliance. She has said uh, what she did when she was when her child was younger was she made sure to put her purse, her wallet, something, her briefcase in the backseat of her vehicle so that she could remember to get out the car, open the back door and take her child out and she says she still practices that to this day and her child is in college and she still she only has one child and she still practices that to this day so that advice on top of what we just saw on that child safety heat car death preventive prevent a video all of that is some really great advice if you guys have some other advice or some practices that you have used with your children please feel free to put it down in the comment section because anything can help you know when it comes to preventing deaths like these and already like they said 19 deaths already this year and you hear what they said this could even happen when it's 60 degrees out 70 degrees out and a baby you know they they body temperature rises three times faster than us as adults because of course we know babies heartbeats beat faster than adults so that right there makes a lot of sense. But you guys, 
please be very careful. I always tell you guys all the time, practice due diligence. Um, it's, it's very important when it comes to our children. Very, very, and not just our children, but our pets too. Because just the other day, somebody was charged with leaving their pets. They had two dogs in their car. And when the police were called out to uh, open the car, one of the police officers got bit. And I'm not surprised because, well, boy, I tell y'all, heat, heat can make you fight. And with dogs, heat can probably make you bite too. But you guys, again, my condolences from the hood table to this family over my Worthington. My condolences to that family. I really, really hate that this happened to that baby girl. I really hate that happens to anybody's baby. I really do. Please keep their family in prayers. And I will keep you guys updated with this breaking story right here from my world of Omaha, Nebraska. When more information comes out about the daycare facility or if there's any more charges or if the daycare remains closed, open backs up, whatever. I want to keep you guys updated on that. And again, please like and share the video. Um, subscribe to the channel if you're new here because we are trying to get to that 6K, you guys. The hood table is on the road to 6,000 subscribers. So please help us get there. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend that the hood table is where it's at. Thank you so much. If you guys want to be a blessing to the hood table, our cash app is dollar sign, the hood table 402. And also you can hit me up at the hood table at hotmail.com or on any of our platforms like Facebook, IG, TikTok, Snapchat, or uh, Twitter. And on that note, stay safe, be blessed, remain vigilant at all times, and always remember to keep it hood. I'm out.